Good morning to all of you. Okay, uh, hope you are keeping well. Uh, so uh, today uh, we continue in our discussion, uh, which we started last time on uh, concentration, okay. samadhi conditions. Uh, how did we connect to that uh, before uh, we discussed, before that we were discussing hindrances in the mind and uh, there were how many? Five uh, hindrances, which were like uh, forces that uh, take over our thinking process. Uh, those five we studied and we named them characteristic of each hindrance we identified and that led to this discussion of concentration. And uh, we were halfway in the discussion of concentration. So today our plan is to uh, finish our discussion on uh, concentration topic. And uh, after that uh, we will if we have some time left, we will start on our next topic, which will be uh, related to the stress, stress and stress management, how to use meditation as a tool. And uh, like last time, we will be having uh, 10 minutes, last 10 minutes, last 10 minutes, we will reserve for our short quiz, uh, the multiple choice quiz on uh, like checking our understanding on the key uh, key ideas in meditation. Right, that is the plan today. Uh, this uh, screen you are seeing now is uh, one analogy, an analogy I gave last time uh, to make it easy for you to remember uh, the hindrances. It's like if we are to uh, drive, uh, having a particular destination in the mind, then uh, we have to prevent the vehicle uh, moving uh, and hitting the left bank. And I uh, will also do, do the same on the right side. We need to control that. Then uh, too slow driving, we have to avoid. Too fast driving, we have to avoid. And also we should know exactly our destination and where to turn, where to take turns when it comes to junctions. So if we manage those five, uh, then we can reach the destination with the, uh, with the proper time. That idea we can relate to the five hindrances. So I'm, I'm just uh, repeating but we discussed last time. So uh, sensory desires, suppose this uh, vehicle is your mind and the destination is the concentration state of the mind. In order to arrive <clears throat> at such a destination, uh, these five forces, uh, hindrances, are pulling the mind in different directions, preventing us reaching that destination which is a concentrated state. Well, uh, sensory desire is one force. It's like uh, the force pulling the vehicle to the left bank. Opposite force is uh, aversion or ill will, uh, discontent, uh, that is the opposite force. And uh, what makes us to drive too slow towards concentration is uh, Sloth and torpor, that laziness we discussed last time. What makes it to what makes us to uh, try too hard uh, is uh, the restlessness and the worry uh, factor in the memory in, in the mind. And what makes us to prevent uh, reaching the destination is our doubt of the way, doubt of the path, doubt about. Uh, our destination itself, how to reach that. Okay, so the five hindrances 
uh, are preventing uh, the mind reaching higher states of concentration or deep concentration. Therefore, we must have a good strategy, good strategy against these five mental factors called hindrances uh, to suppress them, to suppress them in a planned manner uh, so that we can reach that destination of concentration. So that was the analogy uh, we were discussing. Well, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask directly by voice or uh, put it into the chat so that we, uh, we can try to answer uh, when the question arises itself. Right? Well, uh, same five forces I mentioned, it's, it's uh, like a net uh, which prevent us, uh, the mind, which prevent the mind uh, swimming through uh, to the concentrated states. Last time I gave you five analogies uh, about each hindrance, overcoming each hindrance, uh, I will just, uh, I will not explain again, but these were the five analogies of uh, how you feel when you overcome uh, each, in, each uh, hindrance. Sensuous lust, when you overcome, it's like being relieved from a debt. Overcoming aversion is like recovering from an illness. You know how it feels when you recover. Overcoming sloth and torpor is like being released from imprisonment. Restlessness and worry, overcoming that is like being liberated from slavery. Uh, skeptical doubt when you overcome, it's like being able to cross a dangerous desert to the other side safely. Okay, so these uh, analogies will be making it easy for you to remember uh, the removal, removal of uh, each hindrance from the mind and how it feels, how much relief will be there when the hindrance is uh, suppressed. Right? Now, uh, today, uh, to start with, we are going to have a plan of uh, how we are going to suppress the five hindrances. That plan will be uh, very, very important uh, in our life in generating inner happiness from within our mind. And also in your studies uh, towards, uh, towards your degree as well, uh, because that needs uh, good concentration uh, when you are studying. Okay. how? How can we suppress each uh, hindrance? How can we suppress each hindrance? What is the plan? Now, uh, for example, in order to suppress, uh, say, aversion or ill will, we use meditation technique itself, which we, we take an opposite uh, mental image to aversion into our mind and then uh, meditate upon that opposite mental image uh, until aversion is uh, suppressed. Same way, for each one of these uh, sloth, each one of these uh, hindrances, there is an opposite, uh, opposite mental image you can use. So let's uh, let's try to identify them. What are the mental images we can use to oppose or build up an opposition to each uh, force of the hindrance. Each hindrance, uh, there must be an opposing force. These meditations you have already practiced, I have already taught you, but uh, now today is the time we are going to put all these meditations in context and try to identify uh, what job they can do, what uh, help they can do 
uh, in order to uh, overcome each of the five hindrances. Remember the, the meditation means we take uh, a particular meditation thought, that thought can come in the form of a mental image or mental formation, and that thought we will be repeatedly uh, telling to ourselves within our mind. So it's that internal mental loop repeatedly uh, telling that same uh, meditation thought to ourselves. So it's like self-talk. And uh, any meditation thought, if you repeat uh, through the mental loop like this, uh, with enough commitment to it, then uh, the mind will lead to uh, the stages, uh, lead to the stages known as concentration stages. So that will be our plan, but, but any meditation thought uh, will not help uh, you to reach the concentration when you are, a, when you are uh, not a seasoned uh, meditator. Supposing you are a starter, uh, just beginning to meditate, then any meditation thought uh, will be difficult for you to get the mind to uh, concentration state. You have to carefully plan which meditation thoughts are good for me and for what purpose. That is what I'm going to explain now. Okay, coming back to this example, I'll use the same example to explain. Uh, there were these five. Now, uh, you can put the meditations you already learned against each of these, uh, each of these uh, forces. For example, what meditation you learned can go against aversion or discontent or resentment in the mind. I think you already know the answer. It is that uh, loving kindness meditation. It is building an opposing force to aversion uh, so that aversion can be slowly suppressed like this. So uh, our plan should be then using loving kindness in a strategic uh, manner to suppress the uh, aversion in hindrance in our mind. So when aversion, uh, when you feel that the aversion has arisen, and it is trying to dominate your mind or take over the thinking process, at that time, you can engage loving kindness uh, meditation in the mental loop and aversion will vanish. Because aversion is also a mental factor uh, which will uh, arise and uh, fade away, pass away. In order to uh, make the aversion pass away, uh, we can use loving kindness meditation in a strategic manner. Okay, now you can guess what meditation you learned uh, will be opposing uh, the drive of uh, overdrive of these sensual desires. What is that meditation? Sensual desires are all tied up with our senses, which are fitted to our body. So if we think of the body in a different way, uh, different way that meditation we did unpleasantness of the body or anatomical parts, that is the best one. Best uh, meditation thought you can use to uh, gradually suppress the sensual lust or sensory desires. Okay. So in our plan, we, we have to have a five crunch plan because there are five forces to pull our mind apart. Uh, so there must be opposing five forces we should build up and we should identify if you are to take control of your mind. Okay. So what meditation can uh, overtake or uh, can be used as an antidote or medicine against uh, sloth and talk. When the laziness set in the mind in your thought process, uh, suppose you are sitting, you are using a particular sitting posture and you feel sleepy and the mental thinking process is slowing down. Which meditation you learned is good? 
walking, isn't it? Walking meditation will make you a little more active, actively engaged in the meditation, so that the physical activity is there. And as a result, uh, you will find sloth and torpor uh, will vanish. But it's not only the walking meditation you can use against this. Actually, there are three meditations uh, you can use alternatively uh, as you prefer from time to time in order to overcome sloth and torpor. Walking is one meditation. And there is another meditation called light meditation, uh, which we may not have time to discuss uh, uh, in this course. But it's about thinking of a particular uh, light and expanding that light uh, within your body from uh, head to the foot uh, and then expanding it to outside. Uh, that kind of a meditation, uh, we call it aloka sanya or light meditation, can be used to overcome sloth and top. If the time permits, I will teach you that. Uh, otherwise, walking meditation I have already uh, taught you. And there is a third one. The third meditation is, non, no, is to meditate on the natural phenomena, natural phenomena known as the death. You know, death is a natural phenomenon that every living being uh, will encounter. It's the nature. And that natural phenomena can be uh, used as a mental object for meditation. That's called the meditation on death. And that is also a meditation which will energize the mind. Uh, and you use uh, it to overcome sloth and talk. Uh, again, we may not have time to uh, discuss that as well. But since I gave you walking meditation, and that may be enough for you uh, initially when uh, sloth and torpor is trying to attack your mind. Okay. Uh, the other one, the breathing meditation we learned is good against restlessness and worry. Breathing meditation will make the mind settle in the present moment. Uh, leaving uh, worries and restlessness out. These three meditations I will summarize into one word, W for walking, L for light, uh, D for death. Since there is not enough space for me to write all that, uh, I, I wrote the first letter only uh, and the description here. Out of this, uh, you can initially use walking meditation. But uh, when you become a good meditator later, while the meditation practice uh, is developed, uh, you can slowly move uh, on to the other two as well. And these three could, could be used uh, alternatively from time to time uh, to overcome the sloth and top. Okay. Uh, about the doubt, the middle one. What kind of meditation, what kind of mental image or mental formation can be used? What is this doubt? It is the doubt about the destination. That means doubt about those concentrated states on, of the mind. Many people doubt whether uh, there is such a state because they have never experienced it. How do you overcome that doubt? Well, uh, you can think, are there other, others who have uh, overcome these five hindrances and who have reached those higher states of mind? If there are others, uh, of course you can believe in their word. Okay, there, there are such concentration states and, and you can take your mind there. And who are such people? Well, uh, you are religious leaders. All religious leaders, uh, they have practiced concentration to the highest levels and they have advised how to take the mind to the uh, concentration. So you can uh, think of them. Uh, there are meditations when you think of the religious leaders, 
Uh, they are called Anusati meditations. Uh, you can use those meditations to uh, remove your doubt uh, from the mind and become, uh, become convinced, become convinced that such states are there. And there were a lot of other people who have reached those states and who have uh, achieved the inner happiness uh, through higher uh, concentration states. And when the mind is sufficiently convinced uh, through such meditations, this element of doubt, uh, which is a heavy force on the mind preventing uh, concentrated states will vanish, will fade away. Then you can go through to your destination. So you can use such meditations, uh, thinking of your qualities of your religious leaders, their abilities, and uh, eliminate doubt about the presence of uh, higher concentration states of the mind. Remember, mind is like a state machine, which uh, change from state to state, and there were ordinary four states, and there were higher uh, four states of the mind. Actually, higher there are eight states, which I will uh, explain uh, in a short while. And uh, first thing to convince that they are there. They are there. They have been covered by the uh, hindrances. And if you uh, uncover, if you want to uncover those uh, states of your mind, uh, by removing the five hindrances, you can do that. Okay. And that belief must be built up. Okay. okay. Hope our plan is clear now. Uh, we have five uh, plunged attack to the five hindrances. Uh, we are attacking the aversion hindrance through loving kindness meditation. Uh, then uh, sensual uh, lust by unpleasantness of the body meditation, sloth and torpor by one of these three meditations, uh, restlessness and worry by breathing meditation, and the uh, doubt by uh, building faith on uh, people who have done it before. And those are known as anusati uh, meditations. Right. If all those five are properly uh, aligned, all those five are properly balanced and aligned, then only all five, all five uh, hindrances uh, can be removed. Supposing you practice only one meditation because you like it very much, will other uh, hindrances go away uh, based on that? For example, from your meditation journals, I saw that most of you like loving kindness meditation and keep on practicing only that, only that because it gives you some calmness and pleasure. Will that help uh, towards our uh, discussion here? Not very much because the moment you suppress your aversion, uh, of course that meditation will suppress the aversion, but uh, that meditation is not enough to suppress all this. So, for example, sens sensual desires can take over your mind strongly uh, when aversion is not there. So, unless we attack from all these five sides, uh, we will never be able to experience uh, higher states of the mind or that inner happiness, true inner happiness. That's why I'm presenting this plan to you. So uh, although your mind likes one particular meditation because it gives you some relief uh, from the stress and it gives you some calmness, don't rely only on that. Uh, as a novice, as a new meditator, please practice these five uh, together. Or uh, five together in the sense uh, Maybe in one day you can practice all five. Maybe within a week you can practice all five. Like that, don't leave any meditation out. Then uh, you know what is going to happen. That particular, that particular uh, hindrance uh, 
uh, will uh, hijack your th thinking process and will not allow you to uh, reach the destination of concentrated mind. Each hindrance is very forceful. Therefore, don't leave any of them to remain in your mind. So the plan should be uh, attack using all five uh, meditations. So uh, in the journal I saw, uh, many of you, the journals you wrote, I saw many of you want to try breathing meditation and loving kindness only. But those two will not be enough when you start, as a starter uh, of meditation, those two will not be enough for you to reach the uh, higher mental states. That little relaxation you feel uh, will be the last you can obtain if you practice only those two. Okay. So practice all five up to some uh, time, maybe a few months uh, or maybe one year. After that, you will find your hindrances are under control. And once you have taken that control, after that, after that, even one of these meditations will be enough for you to reach the concentration states. Even the breathing meditation itself alone may be enough for you to reach the concentration state when you have become a seasoned meditator, but not as a novice. So just because the seasoned meditators are saying breathing meditation alone is enough, uh, we need not uh, do it initially that way. Of course, it will be enough later. Okay? So be careful. Uh, your mind might urge you to practice only one type of meditation out of these five. And that urge itself is coming, as, coming from hindrances because you like that meditation too much. Okay? So be careful there. Okay, the antidote or the medicine for the doubt is the confidence or the faith in the mind uh, of these higher mental states. Right, next we will discuss uh, how the mind uh, will progress towards progress of the concentration. Step by step, uh, you already know uh, what is known as ordinary consciousness. That is the normal level our mind is uh, residing. Then uh, progression is that from ordinary consciousness, uh, we have to take the mind to what is called access concentration which is the uh, in-between kind of uh, states of the mind, between concentrated mind and the ordinary mind. That area we call excess concentration. There are three stages within that. And then uh, further, uh, when you continue the meditation, uh, the mind will move on to first meditative absorption state known as first dhyana and that is the full concentration but that is also the first level of the full concentration there are other levels as well remember we studied some higher mental states earlier this uh, this this is one of them okay uh, what are the what are the factors mental factors dominating your mind uh, in ordinary states, ordinary consciousness states. Those are the five hindrances. When uh, five, all five, or one of them is dominating, it's called ordinary state of the mind, uh, known as ordinary consciousness. That's normally our daily life. We learned that when the mental states were discussed earlier. Then towards excess concentration, this is what happens. 
when you meditate uh, with that five types of meditation, slowly attack the hindrances. The gross level of hindrances will uh, will fade away. Will fade away. Uh, it does not mean that the hindrances are totally absent. They are dying or they are passing away due to the new forces you are building up. Then there will not be in these states, there will be no strong emotional pull by the hindrances. Although hindrances are present, their forces have been now uh, suppressed by our attack through the meditation techniques. Certain amount of calmness you will feel and certain amount of enjoyment you will feel. So this calmness and enjoyment you can feel normally at the start of any uh, meditation. That is because the mind is going through excess uh, concentration levels. And then there are three levels here which I will explain later. After that uh, you reach a state where the hindrances become totally absent. None of the five hindrances are present. And that mental state is called uh, first absorption state, actually meditative absorption state, because the mind is now fully, fully engaged in that uh, meditation thought. No other thoughts uh, are taken up by the mind at that time. Then we call it absorbed. Mind is absorbed to the meditation thought, uh, and that is absence of five hindrances. Now, at that moment, your mind will be totally withdrawn from sensuality. That means your eye, ear, nose, throat, all that, nose, tongue, and the body, those five senses uh, will not be uh, exciting your mind during this time. So withdrawn from uh, color, withdrawn from your interest on color, sound, uh, taste, etc. Then single pointed attention will be there. Uh, this is sometimes called one pointedness, sometimes called single pointedness. Then uh, absence of all five hindrances, uh, I mentioned already. Now, in the absence of the five hindrances, there are five other good factors, good mental factors taking over your mind, taking over the control of the thinking process. And they are called uh, jhanic uh, mental factors. There are five, uh, which I will explain in a moment. Hope this uh, process is little clear now. I mentioned that there are three states here. Uh, there is a momentary excess concentration state, which we call excess concentration state one, stage one. You momentarily feel that calmness and uh, calmness and happiness in your mind, uh, even in a day-to-day -day life. Sometimes your mind become very calm and happy, and that's a kind of a momentary or very sudden excess concentration level. If you keep on uh, engaging the meditation thought further, uh, then what happens is you reach excess concentration level two, uh, which we call the parikarma, parikarma level. Uh, this is called the level two of the excess, where the meditation thought is getting more and more engaged into your mental loop. Then when you are aligned with the first uh, absorption state, close to that state, there is excess concentration level three, which is called the upachara level. So uh, this is uh, momentary level, shanika, and this is known as uh, parikarma, and this is known as upachara level of excess concentration. But None of these three states uh, are jhanic states, or not dhyana, not absorption states. They are only uh, levels reaching towards absorption states. 
So if you uh, meditate uh, without full commitment, you might be able to reach AC1, AC2, and you might fall back to the ordinary consciousness. And your mind may not be driven fully into these absorption states. That may be the initial experience, but with practice slowly, you can pass these three access concentration levels to reach the full absorption. Hope uh, it is clear. Any doubts? I have not received any question. Uh, okay, uh, so I think according to your journals, I saw many of you have been have reached this level, of course. Some of you have, or maybe all of you, some of you also have reached this level of calmness and happiness. Uh, some might have reached this, but I didn't notice that much in the journal. And I didn't notice much explanation on your journals about the absorption states. But they are there. They are there, hidden in your mind. Their abilities, you are, you are capable of uncovering uh, from within you. Okay, uh, here under the ordinary consciousness, our mind is pulled apart by the five uh, forces. Uh, it's those sensory inputs that we get from eye, ear, uh, nose, and the tongue and the body. Uh, our mind is uh, very engaged with such uh, inputs uh, from the five senses and worldly things. And therefore it's very busy. The mind is very busy, uh, calmness is less, uh, inner happiness is less. Uh, that is what we are slowly driving towards uh, this end now, from this end to that end. That's why I mentioned as the progression. There will be a little more explanation on this uh, later. Now, in the first absorption state, uh, True inner happiness, which is called inner joy and inner delight, uh, which, which is coming out of or born out of withdrawal. Uh, withdrawal from what? Withdrawal from uh, the inputs from five senses, which uh, attach you to the world. So you let the mind to withdraw from those five senses. And that withdrawal itself is giving uh, inner joy and happiness uh, identified by these words. And it's already accompanied by focused thought and insight. Because now the mind is focused on the meditation thought heavily, heavily engaged, and uh, there will be uh, insight about the meditation thought itself. An analogy. An analogy uh, of your mind is that when you are under ordinary consciousness or ordinary states, your mind is like a, a piece of white cloth, but uh, has become dirty, become dirty due to the hindrances. And when hindrances are removed, suppose you uh, go through the washing process, when hindrances are removed, uh, your mind is analogous to uh, the cloth uh, fully clean, fully clean uh, from uh, that dirt, which is equivalent to the mind, uh, mind devoid of uh, uh, all five hindrances, absence of all five hindrances. That you can remember as an analogy. Okay, uh, then about the uh, factors, uh, balance of the factors in the, in the mind, when five hindrances are being suppressed gradually, uh, five other factors take over, actually they are good factors, take over your mind, take over your mind. What are those five we need to identify now? 
they are called jhanic uh, or dhyanic mental factors okay in uh, well uh, that word uh, dhyana is uh, sanskrit jhana is uh, pali um, and you can use either of them jhana or dhyana uh, there are five mental factors representing that uh, absorption state and they will arise they will be on the rise when you suppress when you suppress the five hindrances from your mind okay. so the rise of five jhanic mental factors uh, will occur when suppression of five hindrances take place and the opposite is also true that means when jhanic mental factors are suppressed in your mind five hindrances will take the upper hand this side will go up they become forceful others uh, become very weak so in our normal day to day life worldly affairs uh, five hindrances are in force jhanic mental factors are nowhere they they are lost actually very weak maybe absent but yeah, when you do the meditation and uh, allow your mind to reach the concentration or absorption levels these will take over and these will not find its place they will be lost and they will be suppressed it's a beautiful balance of factors mental factors in the mind well what are the names of those good factors go so five jhanic uh, mental factors let's uh, name them first there is one uh, factor one mental factor known as uh, initial thought or applied thought that is the same uh, the the effort you take to take the meditation thought into the mind before the meditation thought is engaged in the mental loop first of all you have to take it into the mind that needs some effort that needs some Uh, activity and that uh, active component uh, or active factor is identified by this name okay then uh, sustained thought which is the uh, mental factor which help you to maintain the same thought in the mental loop multiple times allowing it to run multiple times that's why the word sustained third factor is the mental bliss uh, mental delight in a happiness coming in the form of mental delight uh, coming from within the mind not from the five senses coming from within the mind then the fourth factor is called the bliss or uh, rapture Uh, which is extreme happiness that runs through and you feel it in your body as well this is uh, i will give the other words later uh, this is uh, about the mind this is even running through your body you feel that then uh, the fifth factor which becomes strong is called single point attention or one pointedness when these five factors are present uh, the hindrances can't be present in that mind because this will take over because each one of these is an antidote uh, antidote for the uh, for one hindrance one hindrance for example can you think of this applied thought or initial uh, effort by you to take the meditation thought to the mind uh, what is what hindrance can it suppress what hindrance can it suppress think about it you know the five hindrances now now you are taking an effort now to take the meditation thought into the mind and that is the opposite of sloth and torpor sloth and torpor means the mind is lazy and don't want to take the meditation thought uh, 
applied initial thought, applied or initial thought is your effort to take the meditation thought, they are opposite. So when this mental factor takes over your mind, sloth and topper can't remain in the mind. Therefore, it's applied thought is the antidote or antivirus, if you like, if the five hindrances are considered as viruses, these are like antivirus for sloth and topper. Then sustained thought, that means your effort, your effort you put to uh, maintain that same thought again and again. What uh, prevent, which, which hindrance prevent that uh, kind of sustaining? It is the restlessness of the mind and the worries. They take your mind away from the meditation thought. The, but when you maintain this factor, sustained thought, uh, restlessness and worry cannot remain in the mind. So the absence of restless and worry will uh, provoke, uh, will support the presence of sustained thought. Now, delight is an antidote for what? The mental delight cannot... Uh, be there at the same time uh, when aversion is present, isn't it? Ill will. When your mind has resentment, so ill will or discontent, can the delight be there simultaneously in the mind in parallel? No. Only one of them will be present at a time. So this is the antidote for ill will. Antidote for the ill will. Then this bliss which is uh, the full pleasure, which you feel physically as well, uh, is an antidote for, for what? I think you can guess. That extreme happiness uh, coming from within is the antidote for sensory desires, which means uh, sensory desires are uh, seeking happiness from outside from external world. But when you have this happiness already in your mind, why would the mind seek happiness from senses? Therefore, sensory desires will vanish uh, when bliss takes over, when this mental factor takes over your mind. Then single point attention. Uh, you, now, there is only one left out of the five hindrances. It is the antidote for the doubt. Right. When, the, uh, when the mind is single-pointed or unified, unified on the meditation thought, uh, there is no doubt about that particular, men, that particular meditation thought or that particular mental image. You are fully absorbed into that. You don't doubt it. That is uh, how the five uh, jhanic mental factors here become antidotes or medicine for the five illnesses uh, called hindrances. So uh, those uh, meditation thoughts, uh, remember we used another word for this, uh, we call it meditation object, okay, meditation object or meditation thought, sometimes known as mental formation. Then uh, we uh, take an effort to generate it and we take an effort to sustain it in our mental loop. And then uh, due to that sustaining, uh, bliss will occur, delight will occur and single pointedness will occur. Well, although I represented someone talking to herself here as an analogy, what really happens is it's our own heart, it's our own mind. Uh, so own mind generating thoughts and uh, engaging in self-talk. So the mind will generate, uh, they take the initial effort, which is called the applied meditation thought. Some books will describe this as force uh, examination, rough examination. But uh, many books will describe this as applied meditation thought, the initial effort. Then, repeating it through the mental loop, 
and then the effort for the sustaining. That means repeating it again and again. Running it again and again like this. That is called sustained thought, the second factor. Applied thought is the first factor out of the five. Sustained thought is the second factor. And when you sustain for a, a period of time during meditation, delight will uh, appear in the mind, uh, bliss will appear in the mind, and single pointedness will settle. Now the mind has been completely taken up or taken over by uh, the jhanic factors. Hindrances will be completely absent. This is what we want to, want to achieve to reach the first absorption state. Okay, at that time, these five, remember this diagram I showed you earlier, these five uh, forces, these five forces, hindrances, are absent and they will not be pulling the mind apart. Therefore, these inputs coming from this side, from the senses, from uh, five senses, except this one, except the mind, leave that out. The other five, uh, those inputs will be neglected now. These inputs are like cut off, cut off from the mind. The mind is not interested about that uh, when these five are absent the mind will not be interested of the inputs coming from five senses. The mind is interested only about the interest input coming from itself, this inner loop, mind looping to itself. So it's all mental formations or mental volitions that is this loop running, this activity running. Okay. That is when those five jhanic factors take over your mind. These five will be absent. Jhanic factors will start evolving and uh, becoming dominant in your, in your mind. That is the process I explained so far. And you all have this ability of uh, getting the mind into higher states. It's, it is that you, are, you, are friend, uh, you have become too friendly uh, with these five uh, hindrances. And that's why uh, that ability is suppressed or prevented. But if you don't become too friendly with the five, men, five hindrances and would like to suppress the five hindrances at least for a certain time, five minutes, 10 minutes, then the mind will automatically generate jhanic factors, mental factors, and help you to reach the absorption states. Okay, uh, we will have a short break here. Uh, there is a few analogies that I would like to give you uh, to, for you to make it easy to remember this, uh, which I will do after the break. So let's have 10 minutes break and meet up again. Use the other link in the model to join.